Good morning and welcome back to Morning Express. We're glad you're watching on this Monday. It's the 18th day of May 2015. My name is Sophia Wanuna. From the sports chat, we shift gears now to the big stories we've been covering for you the past couple of days. And joining me in studio this morning is Hassan Omar, who's Senator Mombasa County. He's also the Secretary General Wiper Party. Also with us is lawyer Ambrose Weda. Gentlemen, thank you, thank as you. always, for making time for us every <coughs> Monday morning. Thank we you. don't take it for granted that you always come. Thank you very much, Sophia. You've been well? I mean, well, just that I don't agree with what the, <laughs> <laughs> the panel just, just left to say. Yeah. You know, that Mike Friday is about so, short solutions. We need to have the short, not the long. I was watching a, a bit of the sevens over the weekend. Right. Because, you know, it was in between uh, part of the games I was, I was, was trying to wait for. My, my, one of my four, most favorite players, Stephen Gerrard, played, Gerrard played, played his last game for Liverpool, mm -hmm. at Anfield, that is. And I wanted to watch because I've supported Liverpool for 25 years, and I've watched Gerald for 17. So, but then he said, but we were losing games. We didn't appear to have any conviction. Uh, you, you're not confident about the Kenya team as used to be, and then you tell us you're, you're looking for long-term solutions. Short-term wins help you to consolidate long-term solutions. They add up, solutions. yeah. Yes, because people that time had the enthusiasm of soccer, I mean of rugby, sevens. It governized the country because you play at that level and you win and you report success playing in the quarterfinals with England and losing after a very you know, gruesome fight. Yes. It, it used to encourage the young people to take to the sport. It's the same way when cricket was doing well. People started, do, started you know, flocking into, 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 into to, to play cricket. Mm. So once it, the, 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 the profile of the game, I mean, or the success is slump, the profile of the game slumps. Mm. I, I, think, uh, I think they need to not literally uh, overhaul whatever they're doing in terms of uh, rugby yeah. management. And the number two, yeah. I think there's this team, which was a star ladded team uh, at some point, the Humphreys and the rest of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, since I think that, that dream team Appear, we have not appeared to, to assemble a, a dream team of that nature anymore. Anymore. You've ke been keeping well, um, Ambrose? I'm, I'm good at doing, I'm doing well. Mm -hmm. And uh, great. on Friday I was in uh, South Nyanza. Yeah, I saw you at the airport. He was traveling to South yes, Nyanza yes. as I was traveling. Very and he looked very calm, like uh, he owned, he owned <laughs> As Kenya opposed to hours. usually uh, looking uh, how? <laughs> it's like he owned Kenya hours and I finally had to go and ask him. Counsel. Wait. Where are you traveling? <laughs> when you say he looked calm as opposed to what? How does as he look? You see, everybody was queuing. Council was with his uh, nice red, sh red, red coat with mm. uh, his, uh, his tie hanging loose, his coat uh, out, uh, you know, uh, dread, like, literally dressed down. And I, I, so we've been called to, you know, to go and uh, board from get to. Uh, the, the Kisumu queue was almost over. So I went to him, I said, you're traveling with us to, to, to Bombasa. I said, no, I'm actually going to Kisumu. Yeah. You will think he's a, a shareholder. No <laughs> hurry in Africa. <laughs> 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 so you've been well? Yes, I'm well. Uh -huh. But it's good but place. Oh, yeah, it's good. They gave me a very good welcome. Mm -hmm. They're good people. And uh, I think uh, I will set my first board meeting on the 5th. Okay. Oh, oh, you're uh, yeah, he's up next mm, month. Board. And, um, <laughs> Look big. <laughs> Look big. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, we're glad you're both here. Let's begin with uh, last week, President Huru Kenyatta declined to assent to the bill on retirement parks. His argument simply is that Raila and Kalonzo are still active in politics. I'll begin with you, Senator. Um, your thoughts on that? I just want, I, I, I don't see the logic in that. They have retired in an interim as Deputy President and Prime Minister of the country. You are given your, if you, if you were to have benefits out of a, a job that you're doing on KT, in KTN, the minute you finish, you are up with that job and you decide that you're going to take another assignment, uh, not, let me not mention any competitor internally, an international broadcaster, uh, let's say CNN. Or but they're not seeking political office in another country, so yeah, you have no, to no. keep it local. Okay, so let, let me keep it local. So yeah. you decide to go then to, to NTV, uh, assuming, just for argument's mm -hmm. sake. It does not mean you lose your benefits in KTN. So I think, I think that, that whole idea is totally hogwash. So, in the so are you saying, yeah. the, question, the, the th thing is, assume they go into the 2017 elections which they are going to go And into, win. As, and they win. Mm -hmm. So you say that you will give them the benefits of, to, of, of the prime ministerial leadership because those benefits cannot run away. They have not been paid any benefits arising. I was paid benefits for being uh, uh, what I call gratuity and a few other things that uh, are usually uh, the domain of constitutional office holders. I was paid benefits for having been uh, in the KNCHR. My colleagues uh, who are in parliament 
were paid benefits for having served in the last, uh, in the last parliament as members of parliament or ministers. Everybody has been paid their benefit. It has been a, a and they are back in uh, in they're parliament. Back in parliament, yes. Okay. Uh, young Nyongo, uh, Orengo. Uh, my, my, uh, uh, I remember once I had a discussion with Hassan Joho. He'd been paid all his benefits. Everybody gets a package once you finish the term of. And office. is there back uh, the, the package in that nature? In that there's this one-off uh, lump sum. Then there's every month a certain amount. Yeah, the, every every person who has served more than two terms, mm -hmm. every member of parliament who has served more than two terms is getting a package. Uh, okay, those who are not in Parliament uh, get, get a package. So it means if you serve a third term, you, you, that, that package accumulates. So are you saying that you are going to hold it and accumulate it for Raila Oding and Galonzo Musioka until that time they try their debut in 2017 and win or lose, whatever the case, the case may be, you then will say you will lump it together? Because that, that, that's something that cannot go away. That's the All truth right. of the matter. So what are coming to you, the argument from the Jubilee side is, so in the event, say, 2017, they come, they win. Yeah. So do they then earn, Raila, for example, a salary as president and also continue to earn those monthly stipends of, you know, uh, retirement package? How does this pan out as a lawyer break it down for us? I think there should be absolutely no argument. Yeah. What the, uh, the, the, the former prime minister and uh, the former vice president is entitled is called a retirement package. You get a lump sum and then a monthly payment and other benefits. Benefits like office, security, staff. Mm. It is pegged on the basis that you have retired. That is what Kibaki is getting. Mm -hmm. And it will come when you retire. You get it? Yeah. I, I don't think even Mashimua Rai Lodinga would have the courage to receive that money. If, if he looks at this country and he looks at it, he would say, look, I'm still active. Even the MPs, the, the, the MPs who have served for two terms, they'll be entitled to retirement uh, pension. Mm -hmm. But that is when they are actually retired or out of parliament. So this argument being politicized over a very minor thing, is it for political mileage? Or what? I think the president was right to the extent of, 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 of uh, saying they're still in politics. What I thought the, the parliament should have done, because I think parliament is creating this, they would have said, look, immediately you retire. When you retire, you start getting it. And then it is Raila Odinga who says, I'm now ready to get it, or I will not get it for now. Mm -hmm. I don't think we should be, as a country, engaged in, in this when it comes to Raila and Kalonzo. Let, let some degree of honesty also come up so that we move forward. Mm -hmm. If they want it, if they want to eat the retirement package, you are retired, you are getting a lump sum, then you are getting a monthly stipend, then you are getting all those, and you are still using them to run around. For Let them say so. Then we say, look, mend the law so that uh, as long as you have hold, held an office, you are given a, a, a package. Call it retirement or send. What Senator is saying, there's you. a difference between a send off package. If you take like the CIC members, Constitutional Implementation Committee members, mm -hmm. they are now going to get a send off package. So different send off and retirement. Retirement means you're off of it yes. completely. Yes. You may engage Even in different the MPs areas. when they leave, normally even a one term MP, they are given a send off send package. Off. But now these people are confused. When it comes to Raila, we have to confuse things. Where, where, what's wrong with that? Briefly. Uh, you, you see what happens is you have to realize this was a bill that was passed in Parliament. There was started a debate on, uh, on, on what are the actuals. And I think that the, the argument then. Uh, there's, there's, this, there's this notion. You see, if you look at the political parties' funding, mm -hmm. you will see that it, it says it should be a, a certain percentage of our resources. But you find that they, they give you a far much lesser, lesser, lesser vote to it. Because, you know, they, they, these, these young people, so to speak, young in quotes, who, who lead Jubilee, believe that to frustrate you politically, you have to squeeze your avenues of resources. They, they live with that more in notion that they, they must make it appear so desperate so that you turn back to them. I have seen that it's a very old adage in how you exercise politics. So rather than allocate the one B or something that is required for political parties funding, you allocate 100 million, which you divide among several parties. And then you know what, I've heard even some of uh, these people saying, you can imagine Raila and Kalonzo with one billion shillings running their parties will be in chaos. But, but that's, the, that's the law. And so therefore they, they do these things because they believe they there will, will, will subject will humiliate you. Mm -hmm. their, their whole idea is based on humiliation. But so it's it's a it's a, it's a, this is a bill that has gone through parliament. All the necessary ventilation, which was part, passed by partisan, all the necessary ventilation, and it was and everybody ac acknowledged that one day you shall be vice president. It might not be 
your climax. Okay, granted, but what do you say to what he's saying? Send off vis-a-vis -vis, um, retirement. You Those see, are two I'm, different I'm, issues I, that have been but, confused but at this I'm, particular I'm, uh, point. Um, what happens is, mm. you, in terms of the send off, uh, I think there's no contestation. But you see, if, as, assume that uh, right now uh, Raila has retired. The, act, the, the question is, he has retired as Prime Minister of the country of, of the Republic of Kenya. He may not have retired from politics. And I think that we also not, not, don't need to put on in too, too much of those slants. Because in the meantime, if I serve in a position that has enjoys certain benefits, mm. even if I'm not, then I don't actively leave. If, uh, if let's say there's a, there's a pensionable ag ar arrangement here with KTN, I could, and, and I go to another uh, media house, then I would still be able to access my pension from KTN as I serve in another media house. So it is, it is the benefits accruing from that particular office. So therefore, let us, let us not confuse it. You see, the member okay. of parliamentship mm -hmm. uh, is, is such that if the more, as you, as you let's say assume that Raila now uh, serves again. So are you going to say that you're not going to backdate and be able to, and you see these people are still serving. The members of parliament he's talking about are still serving All in right. parliament. So okay. Therefore, they, it's the, those who are not serving in parliament who are out there, Kajembe is getting his retirement benefits having served two terms. That's my competitor, uh, uh, having served two terms. Yet Kajembe has declared his interest to run for Senate of Mombasa again. All right, we will wait to hear what uh, will be the end of this particular uh, conversation as the debate rages on. But uh, let's talk about the Council of Governors. They have the elections on Thursday. So Isaac Ruto, who's been chair for the past two years, he's done his time. He cannot re-seek uh, the position any other time. His time is done. So front runners, Weekly for Prana is being said to be receiving support from court. Uh, Peter Munya as well has been out there lobbying. He made that very clear to us when we did an interview with him. Uh, however, Peter uh, Munya uh, Ambrose is said not to be towing the Jubilee line. So he's not quite getting the support from Jubilee. Might even get more support from court on this one. Who do you think should take over from Ruto? <laughs> I have not addressed my mind to, to, to it. Uh, who should take over. But looking at the Council of Governors and the role of chairman and the leader, mm. uh, it needs somebody who is uh, very stable-minded, not erratic in thinking, in action, in manner of doing things. That's the area I would fall to my friend, Munya. He's a bit erratic. He's either sometimes hot, cold, middle. It's not so that as somebody who should understand what the role of a chairman of the Council of Governors. It is a very big organ, actually big organ that is supposed to settle issues, deal with issues of devolution and governance, national government and uh, devolution. But, but you see, even, even Isaac, I, Isaac has been talking and talking and talking and, yeah. uh, and no institutions being established. So he, he, as he's living, he's living as the institution. <laughs> we, we, if you are talking of council of governors, it's Isaac. If he is in Bomet, the council of governors is in Bomet. If he is Mombasa, the council. Yet it is supposed to be an institution established. So I ask you this for yes. Isaac Ruto before perhaps we able to get into who might take this over. Do you think yes. he used that platform to champion the interests of the counties or to propagate and grow his political? I think it was he was talking uh, to grow himself and 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 and, and uh, place himself in case uh, Mashimi or William Ruto is jailed by ICC, then he can either take over <coughs> the college in votes or, or, or run for deputy president or something. He did not go out as the pioneer chairman to establish institutions that when other people come in, they find this institution is there, it is growing. Actually, it is him. If he goes under the bed today, the Council of Governors is under the bed with him. That is a very okay. a tragedy. Senator, your thoughts on his jubilee, tenure? That's a Jubilee standpoint. Because they the did not agree with that, Jubilee most of the time. Him, uh, if you talk to any governor, any, 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 any governor, they appreciated his, his leadership. And what that's, would you see as his successes you, you, you for to, the if governors? You, if you want to demonstrate how, he, let's say, the time of his tragedy, mm -hmm. You know, leaders galvanize at the time of tragedy. You saw almost uh, the, their governors to their numbers. And every governor you spoke about, too, the, even the Jubilee governors in, in, in private, they will tell you, it is not easy to try and devolve power. We are devolving economic resources. We are devolving political power. We are asking people to, to leave their the things they've hanged on to all their lives. You know, these things, they don't want to devolve roads. They don't want to devolve ferries that they can't manage anymore in Mombasa. They don't want to devolve anything. 
So they, that's what happens. They, want, they, 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 they still have the appetite. Look at Kisses Limbarire pretensions that in two years we could have solved the, the health problems. Everybody today tells you healthcare is better off they, because facilities, because governors are managing and they're able to at least uh, you know, open up a few dispensaries here and there and put in some development funding. Then the, today you hear two of my, some of the most admirable legislators, Siopan and Sicily, pretending as if in two years they wanted a miracle, you know, yet the, the same miracle. So what are the successes so, so in that line under, under his leadership? In, in his leadership, first and foremost, he, he has continued to increase the allocation Bikabisa, through very I try to do my negotiation in IBEC. Yeah, I, we, no, again, we, we attend that. IBEC meetings will tell you. Uh, so the allocations for, for governors have increased from the initial, because they were trying to avert the referendum thing. You know, they've tried to manipulate the governors so that they don't support the referendum call. So it started, the first allocation was 190B mm. with a conditional allocation of 20B yeah, for, for, for health care. So 190B, the second allocation was 220. We are, at now, we are now at the point of 270. And all this has not been easy. It has been out of, uh, out of bargain. They have, re they have structured the Council of Governor outfit in the sense that they, they, they are able to respond to some of the challenges almost on a regular basis. If, if, if this institution was, did not count for what it is, mm -hmm. they will not be able to host a governor's conference and pull together everybody, including his president. Okay, yeah. so Munya or Paranya for the next? Let me t be honest. Uh, yeah. For me, if I was in the oh, a others, governor, Mbubia. if I was a governor, my, only, my eyes would have been set on two people. I'll, I'll be very honest, but a bias on the basis that I know Munya personally. I've known him for some, for some years because he was at Moore University. And I find he has the audacity to challenge authority because sometimes you have to, to challenge authority uh, and to be able to devolve. The second person I have an extraordinary soft spot to is my own brother, uh, Salim Vuria, Vuria the, yes. the, the governor of Kuala. So I hope uh, between, between these two people, they will be able to at least take up uh, the, 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 the mantle. Because the, these others, you know, I don't know what, what ball they play. Uh, Oparanya has been a bit active in the last couple of weeks. I hope it's not because of uh, the position of Council of Governors. Um, uh, what do you call him? Uh, Hidero has, uh, I, I, want him, I want somebody who can create a balance. I, I, I want someone who can negotiate for the Council okay. of Governors when, when push comes to shove. Uh, so, and then, uh, so I think what we need to do um, is, for me, if I was a governor, I'll be looking between these two. And, and, right. uh, and I, I want to believe the two of them will make a good pair. Okay, I so you're if, not, I, if yeah. I was, uh, let me just uh, give a view on If they were looking for some seriousness, order, and, and, and moving forward, mm. instead of uh, uh, loose talk at every bend, mm. uh, um, Voria is a good man. I, I he's think been he's, the deputy. Mm, he's composed. He's a serious person. Uh, not too much talk. But we have Alfred Mutua here. But the court people would not want to hear of him. Because he's serious on service and moving forward. And if they see him greeting the president, they say, now you are not with us. They like noisemakers like Ruto, like who? Uh, but the governors, we must, not, we must the move governors themselves will not vote for Alfred. All you, right. you should hear They're that. Jealous. You should, they're not jealous. They're, you see, Mandeleo Chap Chap yeah, is yeah, yeah. Putting the, painting them <laughs> in bad light. You see, there's nothing jealousy because you see what happens. Let's face it. Also, the, bu the bubble has been burst. You know, there was a time when we started off, uh, it was just about PR. National government PR, county government PR. Okay. That bubble. I live bus. there. I can confess. I you can confess there. that yes. you have Even your life has been there. The ambulances are there. The roads we see. Okay. Let's talk about the merger potentially that could happen between Pesa Mashinani and Okoa Kenya. Uh, so the former Prime Minister Court has been saying this is a way to go. That on quite a number of areas you are reading from the same script, but not on all. Is it something you think should happen, uh, Hassan Omar? You know, uh, I'm one of the members who's in the steering the core campa campaign. Uh, there is uh, James Urengo, Mudama, TJ Kadwang, uh, uh, a few of the friends, uh, okay. colleagues. Uh, so what, we, what our desire is, uh, is to have, uh, to build a broad-based movement. What better broad-based movement than to include an entire, w one of the broadest galaxy of uh, political, political also uh, leaders. Uh, we, we, we are telling the governors, uh, we want to increase allocation to counties. They, it's not, I remember we, uh, uh, Isaac Ruto was, was telling us, he has not seen people who are not cases like senators. I said, why? He says, we are saying that we want to make Senate the upper house, we want to support the Senate, and you know, some of your leaders, Kendike and the rest, are running up and down saying we don't want the referendum. There, so I think the, 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 what we are saying is that they, I, we are telling the governors, your issues are captured. We have agreed to make Senate a fully-fledged legislative house. 
uh, in the Okoa Kenya uh, campaign. Uh, we have given it more thorax in terms of oversight of the governors, and governors have to buy into that if they need more money. Uh, they will have to attend to all. So on money, you are reading from the same script. However, on issues like electoral reforms and what you want to do, the electoral IEBC, they are not in agreement. Not so not how do you agreement. sort out the, the what you are not agreeing and, on? Uh, and inclusivity, they want it more defined. Yeah. Because they believe that there is uh, the article, I think, 197 of the Constitution takes care of inclusivity in county governments. It's just that there's lack of a legislative mandate, a legislative framework. They say that the, uh, the, the 1997, I think, talks about inclusivity with respect to the diversities of the county and minorities. Okay. So, uh, but, and then that's the, so the electoral reforms is a contentious issue, and uh, IBC is a and contentious IBC. issue. But, but the issue of, uh, uh, the other issues are not including devolution of security. We have an element, so we're not devolving security, but we are uh, creating what is called the, the county... Uh, County Security Advisory Council. All right, let me yeah. bring this to you, Weda. <coughs> yes. um, if these two merge, do you think they would gain more ground? Yeah, I, I think so. What, what, what? Uh, some of the proposals made by Okoa Kenya are very novel, very good. In fact, you look at them and say, "Wow, we should have done these things yesterday." Mm. They are good. We need more money into the counties. In fact, the only thing they are not telling us, where is that money from? That is why some of us are saying, wait, so that the economy grows, so that the cake is bigger. But then there's more money, give us, give us. It is like either the president or the deputy have some store for money that uh, they are keeping and under lock and tear and not releasing to the counties. Yet they know that we collect as a country about 1.3 trillion shillings. That money has to be divided among the services that we're supposed to render mm -hmm. to the country. So when you divide it, they see actually nothing remains. But they are saying, let's close our eyes so that we, we, we do one, two, three. They also do not want to recognize. And I tell Kenyans, and I will face them sitting in the face, it will, we implement this, we have to be ready to pay higher and higher taxes. And with the economics background, Mr. Senator, what it means is that the higher the taxes, then the, infl the rate of inflation will go up, and then things will go haywire, and the money again will not be good enough so because it will be too much money chasing yeah. up a few goods. So as you people politicize economic issues, please understand that it has a counter effect. So Let us implement the constitution for another 10 years, look at what, where we can go, grow the economy, and move forward. So for you, your position is at this time, of course, finances yes. and more money to the county is not the only issue on these yes. Uh, yes. proposals, yes. but you maintain this is not the time for yes. a referendum. Yes, it's, it's too that early. That there are other avenues. Too early with the, with the, with the, with the, uh, it is too early to start mutilating the constitution. Have mutilating, no and yet you say there are other, some of the proposals you that are good. So it's not mutilation, it's just getting better. You see, uh, mutilating because the constitution is yet to settle. We are even uh, yet to settle the one third rule. You get it. We still don't know. The parliament doesn't know. Senate doesn't know. The, uh, the entire parliament doesn't know. Mm -hmm. Then we are not looking at all this vis-a-vis -vis the economy, the, 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 the taxes. Yes. So, so it is too early. So we are not, Good but too early. We are not saying any money. We are just saying the 1.2 trillion must be shared mm -hmm. in, those, in, those, in, the, in, that, in that proportion we are talking about. And you see, I keep telling him, every day we keep <laughs> making the same argument here. Yeah, we, need to make, we need to make counties viable economically so that then you can in expand the tax base. This 1.2 trillion that is, that is there today will expand to 2 trillion if every county, Mandera County, Wajir County, Turkana County, uh, Isiolo County, Marsabit County, also have a, a tax revenue base because you are going to invest. When you invest in these counties and, and make them viable economically, it, it's, it's the same idea. At one point, the standard newspaper, print, had to squeeze itself to invest in KTN. KTN then became literally viable. So because now it attracts its own, its own. Then what happens? Then these two supported the establishment of, let's say, Radio Maisha. Then, you see, so, it is, it's, so then these, these, these units become viable, and they all then contribute. So what we are saying, you, these counties right now are only paying salaries majority of counties, they are not being able to meet that, 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 those, 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 those essential service kind of requirements. Mm. Look, when, uh, some counties today, I saw uh, governors like uh, the Wajid governor, I saw the Mandera governor launch the first tarmac road ever in, in their counties. They, they have been able to expand 
you know, access, accessibility to water. So when you do this, people now get the incentive to move into these areas. All right. And it, it starts, people start to invest. You don't, you don't attract investment by simply paying salaries of county government staff. And speaking of paying salaries and public wage policy, this will be discussed this uh, week. Uh, we have SRC today. Yeah? In fact, I'm, unfortunately, I, I was not able to go because the, one, the three committees that was invited, ours was included. People are now in... Um, what do you call it? Uh, in Nevasha. Nevasha. Okay. Lodge. <laughs> so, Senator, um, what I, let me ask you this because wage bill, 20.9% yes. roughly is how this has been growing. It's yes. a conversation we've had for a while now as a country. Those yes. numbers are not changing. Yes. We want more money to the counties because a lot of this money is yes. anyway going to the wage bill. And then you have the allowances, the seating allowances yes. that again yes. um, off the pay slip, but also just part of the problem. Will yeah. we find a solution soon to this wage bill <coughs> issue? I, 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 I see the tragedy away. I see it forward and it's very sad that those who share that very money, those who sit and say, look, <coughs> we have 1.3 trillion. Mm -hmm. We have to share it among services. Education has to get it. Uh, we have to do our roads, our uh, defense, all this. Those are the people, this, the parliament, the senators and the MPs are the ones saying, first of all, when you sit, remove 50%. That's devolution. Okay? And then this balance, let's see. We call it, in other words, voodoo economics. We, they are not themselves suggesting how we can reduce the wage bill because they are the, actually the perpetrators of high illegal earnings. If we do not deal with the wage bill, and we have to render services. There will be no money to invest, leave alone to share to the counties. Mm. So unless Parliament itself comes up with ways, specific, tough measures to reduce the salaries so that we have savings, so that we have investments, so that we grow the economy, then we will go, in, uh, we'll go around in a circle of poverty. And yeah. they, they should know it. If they don't, then uh, somebody should lecture them on, on, on these things. And Senator, we should see legislators come out uh, more vocally ones, against the, know, the ones, sitting the one, the allowances. Time. Senator, let's, let's move it forward. Sitting allowances, because this has continued to be a nightmare. Let me tell you. And we one, don't see you as vocal, that is legislators, the leadership, because the beneficiaries. At one time, two people understand the mathematics that's here. And like, you still one one at, the, at the level of Bill Okero. You remember there was a time, they, they just poked holes into, you see, the, the good thing about, we, we know some of us don't try to poke holes in everything he says. The, the, most of the what he says is not factually right. You know, he talks about a parliament, which he refuses, he refuses to acknowledge, that is Jubilee, including its executive, which directs everything. We have a parliament which is a mob. Once it is set out to, to, to do something, it, it's when, when the Senate takes its time, that's why the Senate, now you know, you know, you know there's this crisis in terms of mediation. That Senate said, no, this money is not enough for counties. You need to up the, the bill from two, two, two 250, 250, I think 250 something to 270 something. So, so we now have gone into mediation to try and see, because the Senate takes its time to thoroughly go to the proposal. It's not jubilee. We defend the interests of counties. All right, but they to have my a, question. They have, they have a National Assembly that is, that is a more, well, You see, you were talking about the allowance issues, huh? Uh, he might, uh, he, you see, when a, when, a, when a lawyer says those allowances, those earnings are illegal, they might be exorbitant, but they're not illegal. <laughs> they, are, they are supported by statute. And you have to realize they are, they are supported by, by, by the SRC. These allowances were negotiated by the SRC. You remember when the SRC uh, came and had a, had a discussion at the very onset, together with, um, with the vice deputy president at that time, the uh, Parliamentary Service Commission, and they decided, okay, we, they, yes, yes, we've slashed, uh, you've slashed a few things, and then there were one or two things that were added uh, to members of parliament. So it took the earnings to about eight hundred thousand taxable. So when, it, when you come, when you come and uh, and hear this kind of rumors that they just shun out, you you even even right now, all the allowances have been rationalized. We take the same travel allowance like anybody else. There used to be specific travel allowances for, for members of, of, the, of parliament. Right now they've been rationalized across the, the sector of the public service. So when they, when they come here and just shun things because they've had it from, uh, from, uh, from, uh, from some, some gallery somewhere, it's, okay. it's, 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 it's wrong and in factual. Let's talk about the Independent Intellectual and Boundaries Commission. This week it is embarking on what they're calling the so voter education. annual... Uh, education. Mm. So this is coming at a time when, on one hand, the CEO in an article w was quoted as saying that they don't have money for voter registration. They are in debt in as far as 2013 elections and some of the money that went into preparations. 
they're also suffering in terms of public trust that uh, their confidence the numbers have dwindled because again of what has emerged from that and also Raila Odinga and other leaders who've not who've called for the disbandment of IEBC we have two years to go to the general election when you look at this weather what should be the priority of IEBC Approaching 2017, they face a myriad of issues, including confidence, which is key perception yes. that when people are going to the vote and they're going to you know, cast their votes, the sanctity of that and trusting that this institution yes. will make sure yours counts <coughs> as was cast is important. But that is just one of the numerous issues they face. Uh, uh, two years ago, I, about two years ago, I, I expressed this view. Somebody of uh, Moshimo Raila's status and support, if he comes out and casts as passion on an institution, it kills that institution. Mm. As we talk now, he has hit the IEBC so much and so hard that they have lost credibility, whether what they did was wrong or whether what they did is right. And as a country, coming from the experience of 207, the best would be we deal with the issue of IEBC today. We all sit down together, agree whether we are going to go on with these people or we are going to reconstitute it so that we have a fresh IEBC which has time, if that is the path we are going to go through, which has time to register voters and to prepare for the next election. If we keep on jostling like that with the, the, the punctured IEBC, then whatever they do thereafter will create more issues. We may go to, back to elections with even more issues and uh, nobody will accept that they have lost. If President Uhuru lost, he would not accept. He would say, these are Raila IBC. If uh, uh, Mojimo Raila won or uh, lost, he would say, these are Uhuru IBC. So I think as a country, if we love this country, it is time for us to say, look, something, we have been, the IBC has been hit so hard, mm. so hard that they have lost credibility because of those punching and therefore, what do we do now so that we are clear the two years we are ready preparing for elections? Yeah, Senator, what do you say? Because on one hand, calling for this disbandment and the issues being raised, there's argument for why that is being called for. But on the other hand, if we end up with the same IEBC, what are you then telling your supporters? Yes, that that let's go in there, but we don't trust yeah. these people from the get-go. You know, if you want to know how for granted the government takes IEBC, they go and make an announcement that they're establishing consulars to facilitate diaspora voters. And I, I recall we, we hit that hard the first day, and, and I think they came out now saying, oh, no, 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 no. We, 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 were not in, we were not consulted in that decision. You know, when I, when I already know that you, have, you count for nothing, you know, like right, what the ESCC right now is, it counts for nothing, you know? I see some of its leaders, uh, the persons who are still there, constantly meeting government operatives, I don't know, discussing what. But I, that said and done, when, when you count for nothing, you know, and you, yet you it can make you can make you, you can make uh, you can make a, a declaration. Mm -hmm. IBC right now is only its only capacity is to hold uh, successful elections at local level, county. So and such uh, as yours, yeah, yeah, presidential. Or, or, but but at that level where there is high interest, high high stake, I think they, 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 they mellow. You look at the characters of the personalities in there. You know, part of these things has nothing to do with the independence of, uh, of of institutions. It has more to do a lot a lot more about character. I have been an, a commissioner myself, and I know how, how hard it takes that it, independence is a combination of the functional mandate and the character. And right now, I think we've given, I think all, all commissions have been scared, uh, have, been, have been, you see wh what has happened, how, how, how ESCC has been decimated. It shows you that you, all you need is a, is a flimsy letter to the legal committee in parliament headed by Chep Konga, who will pass a recommendation for your, for your tribunal, and you will be forced out immediately. What you're saying here, Senator, is that IABC is good for what I'm saying, IBC county governments, not good for national elections. No, no I'm saying what its is capacity it? is diminished to that extent that I, I, we have doubts whether it can hold an, an, an election of. of but a we now have magnitude. an election coming, 2017. That's granted; it's a given. So, how do you balance the two? We on are, one hand, wanting those issues you have addressed, but on the other, not puncturing uh, this um, referee so much, so mm -hmm. that everyone, perhaps even voter apathy, becomes an issue because people know, will be like, "Why bother going to vote if anyway the people who are going to be in charge of?" a good young man and appointed him CEO. I'm, I'm, I'm being very sincere. I, I Shiloba. Uh, yeah, Ezra. I worked with him for four years when I was at the Ken CHR. I know him as a. He's younger than me so they've taken a very young man I, I hope he can steer credibility I you know I, I, I believe he was elected it was, it was appointed on merit and I want to believe but whether 
he can overrule nine uh, commissioners is, is because you know commission is the policy body and I and this commission now has already a template that we can simply take a flimsy uh, uh, allegation to a, a tyrannical uh, you know lumpen parliament uh, legal parliament and uh, the legal committee and they will pass a vote that you know, they establish a tribunal and before you realize you all you all be skipping out so we are in a rock and a hard place, but we have warned the, about these issues for the last, since elections, since 2013 elections. So this is not something new. And I, we will not allow a situation where, like Burundi, where uh, the, the ESC, ESCC, what is it called? ESC and ESCC, almost of similar character. East African community says that now, you see, we are going, we, they are, the circumstances for holding an election in Kenya are not conducive. The, the circumstances will have to be conducive. So we have to work backwards and ensure that every safeguard for a free and fair election is put into place. Between a rock and a hard place, perhaps a good way of putting it, Wanda, what does the IBC, in your opinion, need to do to win confidence from Kenyans? Because they need that going forward. On the other hand, taking the heat. Let's take it. IEBC came in, a new commission after the coming in of the new constitution. They came in very short. Now, when you are being hit with a big hammer from a big uh, Herculean man called Railo Dinga, he hit the IEBC, he hit the court, and immediately, because he has 5 million supporters mm -hmm. with their children, is a, if you take that ratio out of the 40 million Kenyans, you'll find that 15 million Kenyans believe exactly what he says. So you lose confidence among 15 million Kenyans, you go down. Even Mutunga went down. But when Jubilee so, then stands by, quote unquote, IBC, doesn't yeah. that, that propagate that the is, same things Raila is raising? Listen, doesn't, no, they all need to come listen. and address the issues now, now and then move on. By when Raila started accusing these institutions, you leave Jubilee between a rock and a hard place. You defend IEBC, they say, ah, they're rigged for you, that's why you're defending them. The other side, you say, is, look, as we are, if we, uh, you are quiet, they say you are not defending institutions. Mm. So, it, as government, it's just time when you say, no, we have to say this. Then they say, you see, Raila says, you see, I told you. Now, see the way they are defending them. Because they told it, it stole elections for them. The same as the uh, 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 the judiciary. So first and foremost, you need to talk to your man and say, to enable this country to grow, he should support institutions, not hit them as and when they come. He has hit IEBC so much that my honest view mm -hmm. is that we should address it today by, the, by reconstituting. They are, I feel sad because the IEBC chairman is my classmate and a good man and an innocent man. And then it appears uh, the, the other gods may have conspired. Then I, 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 the chicken get also came and Raila took that and ran away with it. So under those circumstances, and uh, in view of uh, the venom that court is pouring and the possible loss of elections that they are also facing, to avoid chaos, I think we need to reconstitute so that they bring us an Omar as one of the commissioners. So you'd urge your people from Jubilee yeah. to support this reconstitution? Otherwise, we are going to, they, are going, they, they are going to lose. They are not going to accept that, and then it will be chaos. Yeah. I think oh, that you, you, you want to Do test you the credibility, you see those are institutions that must stand pressure. You, you saw the erratic, erraticism of the chairman in his interview saying how Raila has never accepted an election loss and stuff like that. Rather than start to jingle from a professional point of view and answer the issues that have been addressed to you by you know, coming up with fact bases, showing, demonstrating yourself. And even this Mutunga thing, you hear judges saying, yes, maybe we might have erred. Supreme Court judges that mm -hmm. we did not accept that evidence. That's why some of sometimes when uh, I, I know for a fact uh, the, the, the movement that uh, once Mutunga is, is very harsh on him. Yeah, because you see, sometimes you ha want, when people see a friend who they can identify with ideologically, they expect him to exercise his professional judgment. But they also expect him to have what is called the soul of the struggle. So that's why they, they, they are very unforgiving, especially when Supreme Court judges later on say, maybe we'll have, we should have accepted the evidence now in just in, to in, in, in forums. Uh, that, that adds insult to injury. And I can see here my friend, uh, my brother, uh, Halwale, I've, I've been looking at his tweets. He's yeah, been tweeting he's very been actively tweeting today. Actively uh, Boni, uh, he says, IBC is compromised and can not win any confidence from Kenyans. Yeah. Because he's right. Chairman, we concord whether we like it or not. Controls about 50% of the electorate in this country. We shouldn't cheat ourselves about it. So I think we, it would be hard for me 
to make a pronouncement that I can trust an IBC that is okay. le within the leadership that we have at this point in time, a commissioner base that is quite compromised. You know, from if, even for the scandals that have been proven. Look at, look at, the, look at the report of the ESCC, the confidential mm. report from Halake Dida, Halake Wako. Mm. He, he even, he, uh, page 24, uh, uh, bullet 20, everywhere else they have mentioned state officers who are included. Then there they said former uh, officials of IEC. They removed Hassan and the rest deliberately who are under investigations. We saw even them reporting to, to their offices at the ESCC. So uh, integrity house. So I think when you, when you do that type of manipulation, then one now ten, tends to cement that perception right. that this, 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 is a, this is a body that I think uh, our people in Jubilee are very happy with. That's why they can make <laughs> pronouncements. In fact, I was, telling, I was telling Ezra the other day at Chiloba, be very sure, you, it may, you might not have been consulted as a body corporate about this diaspora voting, but they might have consulted Hassan and they thought that was enough, Isaac. All right, let, let's talk about ESCC and the war on graft. So we'll have to wait to see as the processes then begin to get new commissioners to the yes. ESCC. But DPP says three CSs. Uh, files approved going forward. What do you think this will mean for the war on grafting as far as getting a message clearly out that yes, on one hand, it appears to be suffering. You're seeing the commission leadership again going through the same motions, people thrown out the leaders. Um, but on the other hand, corruption is a huge problem for Kenya. Yeah, I, I think um, it would be a good signal. Uh, well, one beautiful thing is that the president himself as a result and has demonstrated <coughs> that he would like to fight corruption and he knows corruption affects services affects performance of the country and can go down with his government but corruption being a huge thing a huge huge to the extent that uh, when people see money they, they, they just uh, run mad so it would be a good indication especially to those who are in government that uh, corruption may one day take you down and I think it is good. Uh, the commissioners, especially ESCC, even if whatever they, if, even if they stayed on, the damage was already done. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they would not have been as effective as, as, as they are. I think they should not have even have waited for, 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 for the tribunal. They should have just left. But they didn't wait. They, the tribunal did not even get to start No, working. they dragged on. They dragged on <laughs> when you could see the writing is on the wall. So the fight against corruption or, or, or people who blackmailed others to earn big salaries like parliamentarians, they, they blackmailed everybody, including the president. They said, you, you, you get this or never. Otherwise, and they, they, they said they would disband the Sarah Serem Commission if she did not accede. It was by blackmail and you people stand accused as Kenyans. We accuse you people in that field. And you better accept and say we are earning illegal salaries that we got by violence, okay. by threats. That's, so that's, uh, corruption has to be fought. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, for me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a stickler to, to accountability. And I do not at any one time compromise the integrity of institutions. Mm. But uh, I think uh, there are also issues of morality. Uh, morality varies from person to person. I think that lady, uh, I don't know, I can't talk Which much one? about Mumu Matemu. But they totally, what they did to Irene, I, I, even, I was almost about to call and tell her, tell, just believe there's a God. God, I mean, I, trust me, they are flimsical. Even Jubilee members in the legal committee were saying, at least you, in the petition, you could move forth with the idea of Matemu. But you could not move forth with the idea of Irene. You just can't take people to, to public uh, ODM and then slander them to that extent. They've tried it. They tried it with us when we were commissioners, but we were made of hard metal. You know, they go around, you know, there's some of them winning sympathy about the ICC cases to, to incite their, 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 their peasants. So I think, I think you need to, uh, poor, poor Irene did not have the character of politics. So, you know, us at least were able to galvanize and our friends came through and we, we stood ground. It's not, but you, you're just taken, you politicized, okay. and just uh, hit hard. In fact, some of the allegations against me were actually built me at home. It's not a joke, yeah? so it's not that it's, it's all negative. But you take people and just smear them because you want to gain control of an institution. Uh, the president comes and says, you know, the secretariat is under siege from the commissioners. And then says, Nini domna futa watu kazi. And then you hear these reports in the media that were told, you know, first and foremost that the committee was divided because we have members in there about how to go. Then finally they are called to state house and or, or at least that, that those are the allegations we saw in the media. And then finally you change your vote. And I think these people realized they were fighting a lost cause. But on a, on a, on a, on a, on a platform of, uh, of, uh, of credibility, I mean, uh, of, of objectivity, the club stood ground. So I think what has happened 
Uh, and uh, even if we were the first ones, at least we just uh, we do not execute the threat of disbanding the SRC for our love of constitutional commissions and the constitution. But I can tell you, we've been discussing internally in code. There is a very dangerous template that has been created of how you can disband a commission. What you need to do is to tell Sophia Wanuna somewhere, or some uh, non some or some some uh, nondescript guy there, just write a petition to us. Then uh, Chepkonga and his co co crew will mm -hmm. constitute themselves and they will say, yes, we have found sufficient allegations to constitute a tribunal. In fact, all commissions right now okay. are under that threat. We need to review the law. In fact, I'm, I'm, saying, I'm, I'm asking them in Okwa, Kenya, if there's a way we can strengthen uh, uh, removal of commissioners, it will be important moving forward. Is it now clear how the Secretariat is now faring? Because the AG came out to say they can still go on with their work. Uh, the commission's not be, the commission is not being in office does not affect them. On the other hand, CIC said <coughs> on a technical level they can, but in terms of forwarding files to the DPP, the commissioners must be in place. Is that clear now? I think uh, my teacher, uh, Professor Gidu Bugayant, that was my employer also when I was young. I, I think in this one is wrong. He got it wrong. Without the commissioners, there is no commission. He's got it wrong on there's, almost uh, the, everything. The, 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 there's stuff. It's like uh, if there are no anchors here, there will be no TV program. Although the, the, the name exists that there's KTN TV. But without, so without the commissioners, there is no commission. And the, the easier we do that, the better. So that we move very quickly to reconstitute and move forward. But this kind of interpretation that end up actually giving the president, because all the all Sanomar will come here and say, this is President Uru who has done that. This is, those interpretations makes, so, gives our Sophia, president a bad name. So, let, let me just yeah, finish. Okay. You, you take, for instance, is now, when it is convenient, they claim parliament belongs to the president. When it is not convenient, whatever, it is because you people compromise yourself originally through illegal earnings. So now you cannot throw the first stone. That's so you're saying uh, now the files uh, uh, have been listen, forwarded to the DPP. Just yes. hold on. Then those you will not be recognized. It's illegal that that is happening. Some judge, uh, some uh, judge will say there was no commission at this time. Uh, but uh, but uh, then okay. you can go around it uh, legally in the, in the sense that anybody or the DPP can prosecute without the necessary recommendations from the ESCC. The ESCC oh. is specialized. Okay. If they go around it that way. But to say that the, the, the ESCC can go on functioning the way it is, that is wrong. I, I also agree on that one. But I can tell you for a fact that uh, even if the, 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 he says there's an illegal salary, it has never compromised some of our positions on anything. In fact, history courts have redeemed us on many issues. In fact, if there's one person, uh, you know, I, I, used to, I was told Lucy Kibak used to, uh, uh, used to uh, m maintain a uh, certain order for errant public servants. Mm -hmm. I think if there was a Let's person who back deserved back. a slap is this Gidu <laughs> guy. He's misadvised uh, the president on literally everything from uh, you know recruitment of uh, of people to go to, to be recruited in the police service to to violate a court order you know the the, uh, the security laws amendment almost all the clauses that we contested the court affirmed our position at least the high court uh, they are you have one of the president's uh, advisors yeah. in studio so maybe uh, he'll, maybe he should have him on that know. level <laughs> you know, to clarify on what advice the president gets in <laughs> every legal issue that yeah. they have been advised they have had to they have had to swallow the, the humble pie include uh, then even, you know, I, I, you know, for me, what I find so funny is for a president to take off and then turn back. I, I think you can just All tell right. a, le a level of mismanagement. Our time there. is up. In less than a minute to each of you, going forward, the fight against corruption, what is it that we need in the leadership? Is it a Martha Karua type or even how she'll go there and get people still throwing it out because I saw someone write an article, they need some form of iron person. Is it what caliber of a person I can withstand the kind of fight back that the office gets. In fact, you actually almost have figured it out. Huh? Martha Garua, you know, Martha, even when she was in Kibaki's government, she stood her ground. Even when Kimunya's report came, she voted uh, in terms of the removal of Kimunya. So I think there are people who must be able to divorce themselves from the emotion of protecting a state for, for just for, for the reason of protecting it. There must, be, there must be men and women of greed. There must be men also and women who have not been tainted by allegations of corruption. You know, one day, I'm not saying it's me, but I can tell you, the more interest you come with, I have seen this uh, firsthand when I have when now being in leadership uh, in the position I've been elected into, when you have grabbed property, when you've been given a deal somewhere, when you're, when you're, you are, you are a beneficiary of all these allocations, okay. when everything that you're doing about is wrong, 
you become very vulnerable and you cannot fight corruption. So you, uh, that's the kind of profile we have almost of all our leaders. They're almost somewhere, they cannot come to equity in cl with clean hands. But one thing I wanted to mention, Sophia, before, uh, whether the, the ferry services. Mm. Uh, this is a disaster in the waiting. I think they need to devolve. If there's one place that is unequivocal, that they must devolve, is the ferry services. Let the counties take, in, take that ferry services. Let them invest in it uh, stru structurally. Let, uh, there is a disaster in waiting. Go the national government has refused. In fact, in fact at least for, the, for KPA, you can argue what is the definition of a harbor, because it says ferries and harbors. You can argue the definition of a harbor. You know, whether it is KPA, is it just the, 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 the okay. shoreline? But, but the fair. ferry is, is uh, unarguable. <coughs> okay. So let county transportation systems uh, take, take that and let them look for investors who can come in and spruce up right. the ferry services. So finally, uh, uh, whether the <coughs> caliber of people then that are needed in this office, or do we need to rethink the whole organizations or institutions that we put in place to fight graft? I, I think we need uh, the fight against corruption requires number one. Briefly. The president himself to be directly in charge and for it. Because it's so huge that if you are left wondering, even if you brought Martha, Martha Karwa, who is a great person, but very uh, this and that, it needs somebody who is composed, firm, and uh, methodical. With the full support of the president, mm. we will be able to succeed. Because corruption involves very big people at times, huge people, that you need the president direct. But the people of Kenya must also be in it, okay. ready to and fight. And we have seen the president directly. Yes, so we need to support to the, the president. Yeah. We need ourselves as a country to know that we have enough money in this country. It's only through corruption that we are not getting the services. Okay. So we must resolve that corruption must be fought. We must not worship those who have enriched themselves through corruption. That, that's the part. One of the things that uh, you get is... Uh, you want to have money so that you mesmerize people, but you don't want to do business. What do you do? You steal. You steal from public coffers because mm. public institutions will not allow you. So the people of Kenya, that fight is for us. The president has shown, and we want him to increase. And then we do a few examples. Mm -hmm. Few examples, like CSS and some senators earning illegal salaries. Then the people will know things are very, very serious. All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us. That is the way it is as of 8 or 8 a.m. on this uh, Monday. Uh, Senator Hassan Omar, Mombasa County Senator, as well as Ambrose Oda, who's a lawyer. And we'll be canvassing in the next few minutes issues around uh, your now board. Huh? It's sugar. So, South Nyanza Sugar South Company. South Nyanza yes. Sugar Company. Yes. And your first meeting is on the... Napia, this is a Napia Grass Authority. You're just, just kidding. <laughs> let, me, let me tell uh, Kenyans no. that uh, there's, uh, the farmers of this country, uh. that there's a senator in this country who calls their job Napia Grass Growing. No, no, no. Better, no, no. I wanted him to, I thought he would be president, no. but at this rate, we no. knew that... Uh, you're antagonizing our base in What I'm, I'm trying to tell them, they, all the lucrative, high-level economic drivers who are taken by people of a certain cadre. Then these little things, these uh, this other things. I'm not, Napier grass does not mean the, 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 that you sugar. Uh, what Napier grass means, these small authorities that, okay. that, that they are given and they think that now they are so much in Jubilee. <laughs> All right, we'll end it there, gentlemen. So uh, what I was leading to is that in the next hour, Michael Gitonga, my co-host, will be discussing the recent appointment of, uh, by President Uhuru Kenyatta, the parastatals. Why did it take so long? Is some of the issues he will seek to find out from our guests this morning. Um, and are this the best of the crop uh, in terms of what could be gotten in these positions? But also the issues of uh, dynasty compensation that have been, uh, that came up. We saw um, Saitoti getting a position there. There was the Nyachais around five or six that caused a lot of issues, Kibaki, the issue of, yes, is it compensation to ensure that you are giving back where is necessary or ensuring that you keep, keep all the quarters and bases uh, satisfied? So all the issues that arose, Michael will be looking at them with our guests shortly, but also we'll have our phone lines open and you can engage and ask your questions uh, directly. So that conversation coming up in the next few minutes, we'll also have international news for you, so stay with KTN.